I, uh, I think tonight we'll um, forego a lot of the pomp and circumstance that we usually uh, open the show with. Um, certainly a, a challenging night to say the least. It's been, uh, it's been a bit of a challenging couple of weeks and uh, while there's a large part of me that would, would, would probably prefer to be uh, sticking to what we had planned and what we had outlined for, for the course of tonight, I don't th also don't think that it would be, um, I, I, I wouldn't feel right about it. Um, tonight is tonight is episode number 350, and uh, while 350 is a big deal for us and a big deal for Finger Lakes One and stuff like that, it's um, it's also a uh, a bleak and challenging Monday for a lot of the the Northeast Derby community with the uh, the news that we came across this weekend with um, uh, Jeremy Gully's boy Martin passing away. So I don't really know if if all that stuff was um, if all that stuff was really appropriate. And I know that it wouldn't be. Um, we got everybody checking in the live chat. Appreciate all that stuff. Um, I'm going to leave the floor a little bit open tonight. We don't really have anything um, booked or planned or, uh, or mapped out. Um, you'll still get the advertisements <laughs> because we have to. <laughs> We're happy to. Um, Absolutely. It, was, it was good to see that uh, uh, I almost called it Razorback Rumble. It's not that anymore. Hot Springs Havoc, <laughs> Hot Springs Havoc happened over the weekend, and everybody was able to make the trip down to an absolutely stunning event at Smith Metalworks. Um, uh, but uh, the 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 I guess the news feeds were were generally full of of the other news about um, about Martin and everybody. Matt Evans checking in. Scotty Zobel, Colin Walker. Colin Walker had a chance to go catch a derby out in Indiana. So that was cool to see uh, some some county fair caliber stuff. It wasn't exactly what we saw out at Hot Springs. Um, Taylor Smay checking in. He uh, he posted some pictures of an engine that he had. Uh, said that it had a cracked block or it was leaking or something like that. And it's just gonna, it's gonna, his, his whole plan is to, to leave nothing to rebuild. Good plan. I saw <laughs> Leave that nothing too. to rebuild. I got a kick out of that one. Um, but uh, I, David Arnold checking in. Afternoon. Afternoon out here. It's already, it's already 6 o'clock out here. Um, but uh, if uh, – well, I was sitting here putting the show together. I did. I had a couple of thoughts that I wanted to convey um, before we get everything sort of opened up. Um, I was thinking about Jeremy and uh, and Jody and and Martin and the Derby community and and the Derby world as a whole. And I was trying to like compartmentalize and and I realized that in Demolition Derby we put a lot of labels on things. We, we, it is by human nature that we're, we label things to help organize things. Our, our, sput is, our, our sport is the same. Um, we have all sorts of labels all over the place. There's, there's Mad Dog and there's, there's Mint Frames and there's Showroom Clean and, and, and Badass. And then we've got shows that are jokes. You hear the term joke all the time and Sandbagger and anything that happens that's bad is rigged and there's all these conspiracies. It's all labeled. It's all labeled. But everything always means different things to, to, to different people. And, and Jeremy Gully, in his time driving, he defined so many of those lines. You know, it was, it was always aggressive, mad dog, um, tenacious as a promoter. He, uh, he defined other lines in a different way. It was always, you know, the conversation about spinning wheels was always fair. It was unbiased. It was progressive. You know, he was, always wanted to do something different, be ahead of the curve. In Demolition Derby, we also toss around a lot of terms like close and, and, and friend and buddy and family, and, and it's people that are potentially across the country that you don't even know, that you've never even met. But you still use those terms when you're talking about them, and, and um, as many of us are, um, we're so wrapped up in our own nonsense until something shocks us out of it, and then we become uh, a community full of empaths, where, where when other people feel, we feel the same. Uh, labels are different things to different people. There's all sorts of definitions, but, but one thing within that that I think is irrefutable, kind of within the context of family, is that Jeremy, instead of someone who fits the labels, he's the standard by which 
a lot of the labels are measured by. And by and large, that is, that is second only to, to the beacon that, that Jody Gully is. Um, I've learned a lot from Jody as a parent, how to be a better person, and, and that's all just by watching them through this, this journey with, with Martin from afar, you know, doing it periodically in person, um, but it's not like I've ever been to their house. It's not like I've ever hung out with them um, when Martin was there beyond basically what was happening in Otsego County. Um, but nonetheless, marks were left. Uh, and as we know, the, the Gullies lost their son this weekend. Uh, it's a fate that they well knew was coming. It's an unfair sentence to a life of trial due to the rigors of the San Filippo syndrome to which Martin would eventually someday fall. I see your chats. I, I see everybody popping up over there. Um, I'll, I'll get to those as soon as we get, to, get through all this stuff. But within that family compartment, uh, we all lost. Martin changed everybody that had the chance to, to come in contact in one way or another. Maybe the drivers, the people, that they, they cherish their own kids. Uh, maybe you drove harder at San Filippo, or, or maybe you got past your own issues and donated to a derby that was indirectly held in a celebration of his life and Mia's with hopes of, of raising needed funds to find a cure. He's a boy who couldn't communicate the way that we do on a regular basis, but could still brighten anyone's day. And, and so many pictures of drivers and members of the Spinning Wheels team with Martin, the shaggy hair, the big brown eyes. For, for someone so young, he had a, a very true magnetism. And, and really, in terms of, in terms of labels and, and keeping that theme, Martin was essentially a celebrity <laughs> in the Northeast circles with uh, dozens and dozens of drivers uh, sharing memories and interactions the last several days. And, and he usually had a cluster of people waiting around him to greet him and say hi at the events that, that he did have the, the, the advantage of attending. Each of those people sharing the loss here and almost feels selfish to claim a part of that too because no one in the Northeast right now has lost like a, like a family task to, to bury their son. Staying in that family idea though, Jeremy and Jody have demonstrated courage and pride and determination. And I don't think anyone would argue that they would go to no end to make sure that Martin knew every day that he was important, special, loved, and they poured everything they had into making each day count. Um, if you have Facebook, you're, you might be watching this right now, and if you have Facebook, you can go back and you can look at the chronicles of this stuff. There's good days and there's bad days. And Jody lived her life for, for everyone to see, and, and it wasn't as a martyr, it was, it was just as a mom. Not because she had to, but, but to educate and to help spread awareness, and, and also whether she meant to or not, to, to be an inspiration. Oftentimes, messages would pop up on the posts with Martin about how strong and amazing and wonderful and all these very, very true things. And all those words, you know, when you look at them in the context of, of being a label fall short. Uh, that they, um, they broke the molds <laughs> when they made these two people. And uh, it's, it's very hard to very hard to see them hurt right now. Um, and it wasn't for all the words and, and the adulation and stuff that, that Jody did that. She, she did that because Jody was Martin's awesome mom. Simple as that. Those were the cards that were dealt and those were the cards that were played and they were never wavering and never stopping. She was always realistic and you know, you look at all the posts and the comments and stuff and, and what she posted and what she said, she was enjoying every moment because just like any, for anybody, those two were fleeting. And as tenacious as Jeremy is on the track, uh, he was the same way uh, in terms of how he approached this path. And uh, I never saw or heard Jeremy or Jody complain or whine or bend or break. And with, uh, with the services ahead, we know that they're going to be tested more, along with the families after them, who are unfortunately, because of the time that we're in right now, and we don't have cures and stuff like that, 
there's families that are going to be coming after them who are staring at the same bleak fate, navigating the same relentless waters, and are going to end up at the same uh, forsaken fort, together and alone. And uh, we think of them too. Um, so, I don't have details on services or anything yet at this point. Um, I don't know, even with gathering laws in the state, what, what we're going to be able to do or, or times and stuff. So in, in lieu of anything else, I just want to uh, take this moment to lift up Martin Gully and his impact on us and recognize the loss and honor the cause of the Gully family. And as one, we are fortunate to have shared in the light of this life cut short and can mutually agree on another label to define us. Grateful. So to Jody and Jeremy, and to all the Spinning Wheels family, our condolences. Lots of thoughts pouring in. Lots of stuff here on, on uh, Facebook. Bobby Krause checking in. Good to see. Good news is, is Colin Walker saw a good track in Indiana. <laughs> Scott Brown sending Paris, Lee Sager, uh, same thing. Ron McClung will never forget Martin's infectious smile ear to ear. I like that. Chris Pelisek uh, said that he wished he had the chance to meet him. Candace Joe, she sent some thoughts there. You said you had some stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Hard, uh, hard man to follow right there. Um, you know, I, I, I thought about writing stuff out, but that's not really me. Um, hopefully I can get through my thoughts. Um, Should have wrote them down. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, was, I, I thought about bringing a, some water or something to uh, choke down as I was trying to get through this. But um, I remember the first time I met Martin, um, we were at Coos and Jeremy was in line with his mod car. And I believe three of the four girls were there with him. And Jody had come walking up and she was carrying Martin and she put him on the back of the car and he was just like any two year old or two and a half, I can't remember the exact age, but he was somewhere in that two to three range and you know, just smiling and infectious. And he was on, the, he was kind of playing on the car for a minute and then he just dove off the car onto Kylie, I believe it was. And I was like, what a little daredevil. Um, just, you know, that was, I like to see that in youngsters and, uh, pretty sure he got that, uh, that, uh, that wild man streak from his dad. Um, but yeah, you know, that was, we, we'd only been doing this a little while when, when coups happened, if I remember completely correctly. And, uh, that's how I got to know Jeremy was, you know, talking about this stuff and, um, you know, and then, uh, through our, our, uh, love derby we you know started talking about that and then it grew into a, a love of, of hunting and a love of football and, um and then like chris said um you know parenting um you know jeremy's our daughters are all older and as i would have things that uh that would drive me crazy i'd talk to jeremy about it and uh always had an answer always you know um and we became real good friends and um I remember the day that they made Martin's diagnosis public. I, I came to the podcast and I asked Chris what it meant because the, you know, the diagnosis and, and what they put up was, it was just above me. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I guess I probably should have studied a little more, but, uh, Chris explained it to me. And the last thing he said was it's, it's a terminal illness. And that hit me as hard as just about anything um, up until that point in my life. Um, you know, we've, we've heard about youngsters that lose their lives through accidents, and we, we've heard about youngsters that have, um, you know, lost their life because of illness. Um, but Jeremy and Jody were the first parents I knew who were facing this. Um, you know, it was, and I just, like, I remember going home that night and just, you know, looking at my kids and just thinking, you know, how do you deal with something like that? Like, how do you, how do you move forward? How do you, 
how do you function? And, you know, um, Jeremy and Jody were both, both very open with the diagnosis and they were open with Martin and, you know, make every day count and make memories. And boy, did they, I mean, as a family, um, you know, vacations and trips and baseball games and Hershey Park and so much amazing stuff. And, you know, the, the family, you know, they, they, they grew tighter. Um, my oldest son, Zach, and I went down to the pheasantry and we hunted with Jeremy and that's where I really got to know Mark. Um, at the time we were, we were eating the pheasantry and Jody and I think uh, two of the girls came in and Martin and he was just running around like a wild man and just so happy and his smile was infectious and you know I remember going back to the cabin that night with Zach and I didn't sleep very much because I just kept thinking you know how are they doing it um, and you know we, we became closer and you know I was able to we hung out a few times and you know I, we, Zach and I went to the gullies and when we were down there eating or down there hunting and had dinner and hung out and just you know welcomed us as family and Martin just always had a smile and he could, uh, when he smiled, it just, you know, it brightened the room and it, it made you feel better. Um, you know, and, and like Chris said, um, you know, as a parent, I learned so much. You know, I, I learned about strength and I, I learned about, you know, caring and, you know, just never giving up and, you know, always doing what you can for your family. Um, you know, it was just, I don't know, I, I, I don't have the words that, uh, that Chris does, unfortunately, but, um, you know, I, I feel very lucky to have been, you know, to, to have Martin in my life a little bit and to, to, you know, get to know the gullies and, and, you know, become like family with them, um. You know, I, I, unfortunately, my wife and, and my youngest son never got to meet Martin because I just wanted to, I just wanted them to see a smile one time. I just, and I always, whenever Zach was around, Martin would, would smile. And, you know, I used to tell Zach it's because he was so goofy looking. <laughs> um, but he would, he'd, he'd usually have a smile or two for Zach. Um, the last time we saw Martin was last summer. We went to pick up a bumper at uh, George's house and George and Liz's house and Martin was there and, you know, we got a couple of smiles out of him and, and spent a little time with him and it's just, uh, it's heartbreaking. You know, I, you know, it, it, it matured me a lot because, you know, you, you me personally, you know, I, I've, I, I've taken things for granted, things that I never should, um, little things, you know, and I was selfish about stuff. And, you know, it, seeing what Jeremy and Jody went through and, and their kids and their, their family, um, it, it's made me a better person. It's made me a better dad, um, you know, and I, and I try to pass it on to my kids. You know, it's, it is the little things, you know, they're, they're the memories. Um, you know, I, and it, it, it did, it, it truly brought the, the Northeast Derby community together. Um, hundreds of thousands of dollars raised to combat this terrible, terrible, terrible disease. Um, you can see the, the team sanfleeple.org there at the bottom of the screen. Um, if anybody is going to donate to anything this year, um, please think about donating there. Uh, you know, San Filippo is a very rare disease, um, which means unfortunately it doesn't get huge grants from drug companies. It doesn't get huge grants from the government. It doesn't get, you know, it's not a, you know, it's not a publicized um, illness. So, you know, the, the stuff that the Derby community has done has been truly amazing. You know, and, I, and I'm going to go out on a limb and, and I'm going to predict that, you know, San Filippo in uh, October is going to be the biggest one ever. Um, money raised, uh, cars, participation, the whole nine yards. Um, you know, and, and I really think that, that Jeremy's going to go out of his way to make that happen 
because I know there's nothing he would rather do than, than to destroy this, this terrible, terrible disease. Um, you know, again, my, my condolences, my, you know, my love, my everything goes out to, to Jeremy and Jody and, and the girls. Um, you know, I just, uh, I'm sorry for the terrible loss. I, I can't even imagine the pain, um, you know, but, uh, you know, as Chris said, we were all better for, for being with Martin a little bit. So, it's, uh, you know, prayers to the Elliot family. Well, we did, uh, we did have the opportunity to see a little bit of good news over the weekend. Um, the Smith Metalworks Expo was an absolute home run. Um, talked with a bunch of the people that were down there. Uh, <laughs> the doors open. I think uh, Jeffy opened the doors. He said the doors opened at nine and the tables were clear by eleven. <laughs> that's good. So that's uh, that was that was good for business. Um, and uh, some of the conversations and stuff that were happening down there. There was um, just really really good interaction and uh, and. Hopefully, I don't I don't speak out of school and and remembering Jeffy's. Uh, I had a chance to talk with him a little bit yesterday in between some of the some of the crisis stuff that we were dealing with at school. Um, he uh, he said that five years ago he's not sure if anything like this could have worked, which I thought was interesting. Um, promoters going back and forth and debating whether the parts would or wouldn't be legal. And, and part manufacturer is saying a part does this, and then a part engineer on the opposite side saying actually what it is is it's going to do this, and stepping in and and that banter was happening in live time, uh, which was which was awesome. Tim Clark was there, uh, Track Shot was there, um, Jason Sauer was there, uh, the Germains, Impact Motorsports able to make it across the border. Dead uh, man. Alex, Dead man was there. Dead man, we're going to be catching up with uh, TJ next week and and sort of setting the stage for for his derby coming up. Um, and uh, Alex Vasco was there with all for him racing. He's got some cool stuff in the works. He's got some stuff forthcoming that I don't know if he was talking about it when he was down there, but I got a, a message about it today. Um, that was it was one of those just letting you know messages. So I wrote him back and said. Why don't you come on the show tonight? He goes, well, that might be a little soon. But uh, keep your eyes on All For Him Racing. Um, those guys are ready to start expanding what they're doing on their YouTube page, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, there was there was a lot of good stuff happening down there, and, and I'm glad that it went over so well. Um, and really, with, with the sounds of things, um, Casey is, is basically just kind of sitting with his head in his hand thinking, I set out to do this, and it exploded to this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Which is uh, <laughs> which is which is a nice problem to have, I guess you know. Yeah, it's not so bad. Uh, so that was uh, that was um, that was really good to hear. And and by the sounds of things, it's it's not going to be the uh, not going to be a one and done, <laughs> which is good. Bigger and better things to things to come there. Um, also had some news over the weekend of uh, oh Ken Owens' birthday is today. Happy birthday, Ken! Um, I remember Ken the hot hot rod car, Hot Wheels car, at the Frank the Tank Wire class, New Jersey car. Yes, yes. Three sixteen, the number. Yep. His birthday's today. Um, uh, Bash for Cash, changing the schedule up a little bit, which is going to be interesting. With uh, the the whole schedule as a whole has been, uh, the entirety of the schedule as a whole has been revamped, and the Turn Back the Clock and Kicker class is both going to be one and dones this year, which is. When uh, when I heard that we were going to be seeing some um, uh, seeing some news from Smash It, <laughs> it was a video. I think everybody collectively started to hold their breath, <laughs> like this is this is maybe not gonna not gonna go off the way that we thought it was going to. But it looks like the show's gonna be able to proceed as planned. I figured it would be some ginormous derby that you know was paying a ginormous payout, and it is. It's just they're paying their classes, but. Uh, Tim's always got something up his sleeve, but yeah, I'd, I'd seen that they were moving the. I think primarily a lot has to do with because so many people from Canada can't come and some of the other stuff going on, yeah. and um, 
So it's going to be interesting to see what the pace does for both classes. One and done? Yeah. For 10000 Yeah. With 40 cars? Yeah. I don't think you're going to have to worry about handing out a Mad Dog Award. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to hang, hand out a Best Crew Chief Fuel Economy <laughs> Award. I think there'll be some guys running the... <laughs> yeah, but don't they both... Doesn't Turn Back the Clock have a big Mad Dog Award? They may. I seem to remember that they had a Mad Dog Award. I mean, I know we're, we're making light of the situation, but... You know, I, I I do remember some some pretty good money getting handed out yeah, for remember. for the turn back. It's been a couple of years now. What? Yeah. So, which I know the last a year ago, turn back the clock was going to be a one and done. That was that had, but I the kicker class was still going to be. But I mean, it'll, it's you know it, it's going to be five hundred cars and six hundred. They're over six hundred. It's three or four days of Derbyan and three days. Hypothetically, if you know they get those classes done early, you and I might be home by like six o'clock instead of seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my gosh, I st- <laughs> last time I you were home was- a little later last time because you killed the family <laughs> deer. <laughs> I think the last time I went to bash for cash, it cost me a van. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep. Coming through Pembroke, just in the year before, I was I had my my I hadn't got my my CPAP yet, and my sleep apnea was terrible. That's when you left the room to try to find some place to sleep, if you remember correctly. And, yeah. like, I remember coming down the throughway and falling asleep and, like, covering all lanes, which was – it's it was Memorial Day, so there wasn't much around it. It was, like, six. Apparently, that's a false statement because there was a deer heading to a picnic. <laughs> but, uh, like, I remember, like, falling asleep and almost driving by where we turned to go to your house, like, off 96. That was that was a rough, rough ride home. But mm. Yeah. Um, RDP had a display down there. Lee Sager went down with Prodigy Games and just yeah, a picture of a bumper for him. And those guys, uh, those guys had a great turnout, had a great response, which is good. There's there's more details that continue to evolve out of that stuff. Um, the uh, there's Frankie guy checking in. Darren's off checking in. Thanks for the stars, Matt Evans. Nick Stepic letting us know that he's back. He was gone for a split second, but he's back and tuned in. Um, Jody Jeremy and the entire Gully family, prayers to you all. Loved watching Martin's journey every now and then. That's from Candace Joe. Um, Terry and Michelle, saying prayers to the family. So that was uh, more remembrances coming in. Um, I saw Matt Gaskin is running for for public office again. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah. Did you see what Matt Gaskin Jr. did? No, Matt Gaskin Jr. did. Dare Bought himself two Mar- guard motors. T- two. 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 You always need a spare. <laughs> yeah. Just in case. I offered to break one in for him, but he hasn't got back to me yet. So I'm thinking that might be a no. Interesting. Yeah. I don't think you'd know what to do with it. I'm pretty sure I could figure it out. <laughs> Pretty sure I could figure it out. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so derby season is open. Things are going. Things are getting yeah, on. I, I think it's going to feel a little bit more uh, more like derby season, hopefully hopefully next week. There's there's a lot of planning going on right now, like more planning in, in preparation from promoters, um, new promoters that are getting up and going. Um, and when – you know, you look at some of the conversation that we had last week with, with Dustin Woods about Triple D and bringing Jags in. And there were some conversations through the course of the weekend about how, what that, about what impact that's going to have on Demolition Derby. Um, I, I still don't think, personally, and you can, you can argue with me all you want, I still don't think that Demolition Derby is ready for live TV. You've been around motorsports that are on live TV. You don't have the the time to do it for live TV. And you're operating in a world where there's a set number of laps. Generally, you can assume how long you're going to be there. If you go over a little bit one way or the other, you know, whatever, you can cut something someplace else. Mm -hmm. Demolition Derby is not ready for live TV. They are ready for MAV TV type productions, NBC Sports, CBS Sports, stuff like that, where we've seen other circle track events get put 
placed with you know World of Outlaws late models, World of Outlaws sprint cars, uh, Super Dirt Car Series modified stuff from the World Finals at Charlotte, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Sure, I think it could it could find a place on TV, but live TV is not where it's at. No, and that's that's the thing. Um, you know, I, in order for, for Demolition Derby to be properly represented on TV, there's got to be um, production, i.e. stuff's got to be cut down and stuff's – because when, when we would run um, the TV shows every weekend for, I don't know, like three or four years, and however long it was. Network at Weed Sport, right? Yeah, yeah. at Weed Sport. Um, it would show – you would show up and from the first set of hot laps until – you were lined up to go out to the feature. It was everybody was running. Like, I mean, the cars would be coming off the track. The cars would be going onto the track. They might get the three quarters of a lap, and they'd be throwing up the green to start the feature or to start the the heats. Because um, you, with the money it costs, you have to be ready to go on air when they hit the switch because it starts costing money. Um, and it was just it was a lot of control. Um, and unfortunately, you know, derbies, they're, you know, okay, you know, when they were still putting cars over the walls at Blizzard Bash, maybe you could get a heat done five minutes, but there's, there just isn't the control. There there isn't to where you can. TV has too much control. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, the sport, the sport relinquishes it yes you know the, the people oh, yeah. in the pits end up having to pay for that the preparation of the cars has to pay for that oh yeah you know the, the how they used to give a lap for a tire change or something yeah. that might be gone yeah things like that demolition it's, derby if the pace slows down you're either going to have to break 25 sticks yeah in order to get it down enough to finish or which will get you nobody coming back yeah. to you know and i mean we saw back in the day you know they tried some stuff on tnn and unfortunately they kind of Turn the wrestling in, or turn the, the tried to turn the, the derby in into wrestling. Um, I he bringing Dusty Rhodes in, and it was I mean it was entertaining, but it, it was wasn't demolition a, derby on TV. Yeah, it was demolition derby on TV, which was great to see, but it wasn't you know it wasn't true demolition derby. Um, in my humble opinion, if you know disagree, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I, it, very hard to get a a feature on you know. I mean, if you, I don't know, and especially, you know, if you're, in my humble opinion, again, let's say you're going to have a, a TV feature that's going to be on TV. Um, you know, let's say it's a, I don't know, let, for shits and giggles, we'll say it's a, a turn back to class, class, turn back the clock class build, which is still a pretty extensive build. You know, you're going to pay 20 grand to win. Um, from what we've seen in the past, a twenty grand payout slows the pace down dramatically. Mm-hmm. Um, a twenty grand payout on TV, I think, would probably slow it down even more. Do I think some guys would go out there and just tear stuff up on TV? Probably, but I think there'd be a far bigger number that would try to run for the the win on TV for twenty grand. So it's tough. I mean, people have tried, and uh, you know, uh, right before. Um, Todd Dubay and Dent quit or um, promoting. Uh, he had a f- one or two shows, I think, like on a speed network, and then they changed it up to where there was like different events in his shows. Mm-hmm. Like it was a figure eight, or it was a this, or it wasn't just straight derby. So um, that sounds an awful lot like TV executives telling a derby guy what to do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's you know Todd seemed to know what was going on. Yeah, he, he was. <laughs> I would say he was ahead of the curve a lot. Um, so I mean, it, it would definitely be tough to do it. I mean, it's you know even with when you know when we'd run Syracuse and that would be you know that was always tape delayed. You know, it always had to go through production and you know it was it was very well put together. But I would. Other than a than a pay per view or a live stream, I would be shocked to see a, a live demo on TV. Unfortunately, but at the same time, you know that that conversation that we had with with Dustin and and the fact that it's we're trying to get this to be something good for everybody and help open the door and create a vacuum and not be a not turn it into a a fox in the hen house, so to say, where it's going to start messing with the ind- independent vendors and stuff like that. I think there's good to be had there, mm-hmm. as long as the sport doesn't cannibalize itself again. 
because yeah. there's that to keep in the back of your mind. That only happens um, every you know six or eight months. <laughs> right. Um, but I think that 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 conversation that we had with Dustin was important because it it sort of helped shed the light on what to what a good promoter needs to do in terms of the preparation to have those conversations. And then he's also very accessible. He will he will give information in terms of how those things come together. And um, you know, he was there answering some of those questions and and. Uh, the talks, the the, the 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 Watts link conversation, and the, the the driving style and rear end conversation, and the carburation and power discussions with with Coke and with um, with Brent from Redline, it was it was good information to be had, and it really it, the the feedback going in. I, I didn't go. Um, I, I didn't go. I wasn't going to. There was no good outcome waiting for me when I got back to work Monday. Leave it at that. <laughs> um, going into it, it started to sort of look like, from a distance, it was turning into Motorsports Expo in March mm -hmm. with the talks, with the vendors and everything. And I wish some of the Derby guys that had gone down there could have seen what was happening in Syracuse so that they knew just how big of a deal this was. Mm -hmm. And then it didn't really matter because they, they grasped immediately how big of a deal this was down there and, and embraced it fully and the sport needs this and Casey's probably going to outgrow his, his space quickly. <laughs> but it was... It have to, was have to build a building just for this. <laughs> yeah, you got to build it. Be going um, to Harrisburg at the, at the big uh, center down there where the whole it's like... 600 million people or some crazy number <laughs> like that. Guy Raymond, interesting take here. Real Derby guys don't care. And I, I'm guessing this was in reference to being on TV and, and driving for money. The rest of us thought, drive hard or drive smart, Derby will always be entertaining. And, and while I agree, yes, it is a fun thing to watch a field full of good drivers who are targeting wheels, tires, axles, trying to knock off front ends, trying to pin a, 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 let's say somebody lays over front wheel and you see that driver fishing out of these awful spots and carrying on, it's very entertaining to watch. Absolutely, I agree completely. But is that entertaining enough for a live television production entity to allot you an hour and a half of live time and springboard that into three hours because the pace slowed down? That's where the difference is, I think. Mm -hmm. If you're able to take that feature with all that chest match driving and, and highlight that in some way over the course of an hour and a half or an hour and 45 minutes, and then you, you sell your own commercial breaks, much the way with NHRA's production does, mm -hmm. you might have something there. But I still think, and, and again, argue all you want. I'm happy to have the conversation. I still think if you're going to hook a non-derby fan or a casual derby fan that's always used to their county fair stuff you're going to have to have cars that look like cars when they pull out and have the fenders hanging off the side and the wheels hanging off the back and the trunk wrapped around the roof in order to get them to say wow that was awesome because they aren't up to speed enough to to buy into that right away mm -hmm. and then the other big thing is you have to have people on the air talking about the sport in an intelligent way if you just continue to go back to the tra there's been I a bunch of demolition part. derby tv shows that have happened in various times and you nailed it it always comes back to the pro wrestling side of it the hype the argument the drama the redneck all that stuff that is not going to advance the sport to the next level nope history channel discovery channel stuff like that isn't going to look at the product the same way that mav or fs1 or espn6 is going to be looking at at the sport, yep. and and that's that's going to be that's well, going to be where things that's the turnstile that we need to find a way to get through. I think that's I think one of the biggest things that's hurting NASCAR is that all the cars look the same. They have different they have different grill stickers. Is about it. Ooh, it, go on. I think I think that you know that's that's when they started losing fans when you couldn't tell that it was a Ford or a Dodge or a Chevy or. If it wins on Sunday, it sells on Monday. But what am I supposed to be buying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get the different grill sticker and put it on what? And I, 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 I honestly think that's one of the big problems. 
and that that's the thing is you know the the diehard yes there's absolutely diehard derby fans that would love to watch toby Hiley and uh butch santel battle each other for an hour straight just those two i would love to watch that but you know my you know my wife wouldn't ever you know she wouldn't be into that but now if there was you know 10 guys out there just hitting each other at 100 she'd be like hey that's that's kind of wild you know that's so. one of the reasons why we have all the videos that we have with derby nation mm -hmm. when we're at topeka mm -hmm. is because that gives you an opportunity to put a face with a name and learn a little bit about the drivers mm -hmm. it gives you someone to root for it yep. lets you know who they are yep and i don't know if live tv is going to afford you that the same way the internet pay-per-view does mm -hmm. i i i here we go we got oh we we lit them up <laughs> uh, Ryan Devroy and Elijah Hicks check in and Eugene Williams says until you do away with big shows it will not be entertaining enough so now I, I kind of see what Eugene is saying at least I can get a point out of what Eugene is saying if you made that show that's going to be on TV a thousand dollars to win and instead of sinking nineteen thousand dollars more into the winner's share and take that to pay for your production it's a thousand dollars on TV I want to be the guy that stood up the nose in one shot. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I can, can understand to a point, but I haven't come home from a blizzard bash yet going, man, that was boring. And it doesn't get a whole lot bigger than blizzard Ooh. bash. <laughs> uh, buy a generic car, switch out the logo detail and the grill every Monday. Oh, Nick, Nick went a different direction. I thought he was, I thought he was getting amped up about the, uh, the, the derby production stuff but uh, he's, he went he went to he went to nascar's low-hanging fruit i like it yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I like it. generic cars yeah yeah so i mean it's you know i i would like to see it but unfortunately i, I think you'll see eventually i think you'll see a mav tv you know catch on and and they'll do some sort of production but you know it's it's going to be i i think it from from the derbies i've personally seen and this is just my opinion but I think it would have to be like a blizzard bash where the, it's, it's pretty fast-paced action for that time. Right. So um, Alex Vasco, who may be biased, just say <laughs> maybe, his comment, this is, this is why YouTube replay of just the action, basically the highlights, has its place and it keeps the action going. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, how, many, how many views does his, does, his hit, does, his, does his best of hits from 2020 have? Like six million, so... There's definitely a, 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 a demand for the, the hits. Right, right. Well, let's, um, let's zip through some of this stuff. Uh, we're going to do it this way because we, um, we've got tons of other information that we need to rework and, and get the final answer. Ooh, YouTube is where it's at for Derby nowadays with social media becoming so popular. That's Tanner Longest's thought. It's a good thought. Social media is where it's at. Yes, I, I agree. May 28th through 30th, 2021, smashitderby.com. Have there the details for you with all the new schedule and everything. Kicker class paying 10,000 to win. Turn back the clock class paying 10,000 to win. Those two are both one and dones now. Compacts, 10,000 to win there. Pro stocks paying 10,000 to win as well. Frank the Tank, old school wire class, youth small cars, street stocks, relic class at 63 and older. Three one and done 80s wire class on the schedule, super stocks, full size trucks, and compact trucks, all part of Smash It uh, Demolition Derby's Bash for Cash 2021. So glad the show is going to be happening. I know all, everybody looking forward to that. That uh, is also uh, tied to the release of the uh, fair schedule. The fair schedule for Smash It is out as well. The week after the Bash for Cash, Street Stock Madness is on the schedule. Fayette County Fairgrounds in Washington Courthouse, Ohio. June the 5th, the Gates are at noon, Derby at 6. June the 6th, Gates at noon, Derby at 3. Four-man teams, that's 20 teams, paying 6,000, 3,000, 1,600 back through. Pro Stocks, that's 40 entries there, 4,000, 2,000, 1,000. Full-size street stock, compact street stock, minivan, mini SUV, mini truck, all there as well. 30 entries per class, 1,000 to win for each of those. No Mercy is right around the corner. It's coming up in about two weeks. Um, just, man, for a second there, I thought the thought the clock said that it was the 17th of april and i, I lost my my whole whole flow there april 23rd and 24th no mercy that's dead man derby's uh spring show they've also released some of the details for their fall event as well uh, buried alive is forthcoming in the fall friday is the three-man compact heats the 80 pro stock heats and the half-ton trucks and suvs 
Saturday is going to open the last chance event. So then the Youth Compact Division paying 800 to win. The Imperials paying 2,000 to win. Minivan, mini truck, and mini SUV paying 1,200 to win. Full size team one and done. Dead man compacts the 70s and 80s pro stocks. That's 8,000 to win. Three man compact team fe features paying 6,000 to win. Full size mercenaries. That's a one and done paying 3,000 to win. Online for additional details. Deadmanderby.com. Unified Point Series is getting ready to wind back up coming up this even, this weekend. Toast Granite City event in Sauk Rapids, Minnesota is on the schedule. So we're going to be having an update coming up next Monday on the Unified Point Series standing as we shuffle the, the, the lineup there. Also the virtual Unified Point Series opening up this weekend in tandem with the, uh, I don't know, I guess you could call it the relaunch. They started in January and then they lost the Bluegrass show, so it's been a bit of a layoff. So... Uh, Kickoff 2.0 with Toast Granite City event. And then after that, Derby Icon Spring Explosion, which is coming up the 24th and 25th. The 30th and the May 1st is Wicked's Urban Destruction. The 7th and 8th is Toast River City Rampage in Henry, Illinois. May the 5th is Hardcore's May Meltdown. May 20th and 30th is Smash It's Bash for Cash. And then Street Stock Madness the week after. June the 12th is Hardcore's uh, Destruction on the Knob. June the 25th is Toast Bartholomew County Fair. And then June 26th, Rouse, Pro Rouse Promotions, Wayne County Fair. You can stay up to date with all that and get the full schedule. That only takes you up through the end of June. Get up to date with the full schedule on uh, 527unifiedseries.com. Let's see. Jeffy's Fab Farm. You had a chance to it, it, buy about lunchtime. Jeffy was in social mode, and if he needed an order, he was writing on a pad of paper because everything was gone down there. That's awesome. And Smith yeah, Metalworks, good, good for him. Recognizes an industry leader in all manner of purpose-built demolition derby parts, starting with rear ends in 2006. Jeffy's Fab Farm expanded to headers in 08, and the shop can boast a combined 70-plus years of mechanical skill. Jeffy's Fab Farm specializes in LS conversions and conversion components with consistent feature wins across North America. Your turnkey solution is only a phone call away. Jeffy's Fab Farm Camry in a Box campaign sets you up for success for a retail price of $525, and you need to ask about the multi-fit shifter options. You'll also find fuel and air parts, suspension and transmission items, steering components, pedal switches and gauges if you need it. You can find it on the farm, Jeffy's Fab Farm, jeffysfabfarm.com. The hardcore tour, Frankie Guy, was, was hanging out there in the chat for a little while, checking in. Frankie was over at Smith Metalworks as well. You can stay up to date with the hardcore tour 2021 on HardcoreDerbyPromotions.com. Tell you what, Hardcore got behind the uh, Crash Course Nationals too, the online derby that we're having mm -hmm. um, in June. And I'm trying to keep up with the rules that he has for Hardcore and apply them. Well, RDP came up with some updates and now you can have kicker cars, like you can put kickers in them awesome. with the engine cradles. That's awesome. And, <laughs> and, and leaf so the nose it. never bends? So it just doesn't bend. So I, gotta, I have... I am bothering him with rules questions, trying to understand his interpretation of his rules to keep the rules true to what I told him it was going to be with video game cards. And then he locked me. <laughs> 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 May the 15th is May Meltdown in Stoneboro, Pennsylvania. June 12th is Destruction on the Knob in Mark Leesburg. June 26th, Mayhem on the Mountain for Hardcore. This is all leading up to that huge uh, Hardcore Championship event, September 25th and 26th. Destruction on the Knob is July the 10th. King of the Hill at the Jacktown Fair is the 24th of July. 29th of July, the 3rd and the 6th of August is Destruction in Dunbar. That's the first of two stops. And <laughs> Frankie Guy, he's said no worries. He's in the chat. <laughs> he's still there. Uh, Chaos in Cole, uh, Cole County. That's the Green County Fair in Waynesburg on the 13th of August. The 14th and 20th is Washington War Zone. The 4th and 5th, that's Labor Day Lockdown back in Stoneboro. September 7th and 8th is the Route 40 Rumble in West Alexander, and then everything just comes back around for the Hardcore Championships at the final confrontation in Dunbar, PA. September 25th and 26th, 10000 to win, $3,000 Jeffy's Fab Farm Mad Dog. It's uh, going to be quite the show. Choo-choo, here comes our train. Yep. We should get yep. them to sponsor us. Who, Conrail? Yeah. I don't know. For all the free advertising they get every week. <laughs> all they do is blow a horn. More of a distraction than anything. This metal works. Is, uh, <laughs> Matt Evans heard it too. All purpose fabrication shop that is taken the Northeast by storm. They just hosted that that outstanding uh, expo event. You, you make sure you jump online. A bunch of podcasts and live video and stuff were shared by Track Shot as they're getting ready to um, kick off their live streaming season. All purpose fab shop took the Northeast by storm. So metal works features more than 40 years of combined metalworking experience. The hallmark of the product line is the pointed and flat front bumpers. 
replicating popular factory releases. You can't forget the super stock front bumper. That's in the video game now, too. They can be stuffed or ran hollow. There is also a compact version of the pointed bumper. Uh, you can cut the sides down to fit whatever application you've got. Other items include Crown Door Vic skins, uh, uh, Crown Vic door skins, battery boxes, engine mounting systems, pedal combos, and shifters. The shop offers all the odds and ends, such as distributor clamps and weld-in centers. Be sure to ask about the GM floor liners. That's right, floor liners. Everybody needs those. For <laughs> Got to replace that bad floor. <laughs> In-person locations are in Mercer Union Town in Bethlehem. Jump online, smithwittleworks.info. Experience and passion, second to none. I wonder how small of a hole I could get away with patching by putting a whole floor pan in a car. I don't know. What were you thinking you'd be able to get away with? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. It does. It does sound like a lot of work. Um any final thoughts? Rough couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Let's hope things get better. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, thinking of uh, Ed Brewster, and I mean, it was only three weeks ago today that that, that he passed, and you know, some uh, some bad news with falling Kathy, but optimistic outlooks on the on the backside of that, and uh, of course, uh, you know, I. I branching out from all this stuff Sunday we had one of our sixth graders die and that has really impacted the Middle Lakes community a lot too at school so we're we're thinking of all of them too um, I miss yes it was yeah I got the grade level right I keep getting the two kids and the ages flip back and forth it's been uh, been a crazy couple of days so for those of you that were messaging me on on Sunday or those of you that I promised stuff to that you were going to get this weekend and you didn't get it Sunday um, we had some stuff going on. Uh, I can't put any details out there. I just know that um, a handful of our friends at school periodically uh, periodically catch clips of this and say that they they see it. And uh, I don't want uh, I don't want our Mid Lakes family to be left out of this too. Um, we're certainly thinking of everybody there. That's uh, that's some pretty tough news to take as yeah, well. I didn't even so, know about that. Huh? I didn't hear about it's, it. You have to tell me afterwards. Yeah. Didn't have a clue. It's uh, certainly that's not been, far away from us. That's close. I can't believe I didn't hear that. Yep, it's uh, been a challenge. So um, I got a got a message from Josh Buell. Uh, I appreciate it, Josh. Thank you. Um, trying to do what we can. Got that. Got that. Got that. Got that. All right. So a uh, a somber 350 in the books. We'll come back again. We'll do 351. The and do 351 the way that we wanted to next Monday. Looking forward to catching up with uh, TJ McCulloch and Deadman, talking a little bit about their show coming up, trying to follow up on some of the stuff from this weekend. And, and geez, at that point, we're going to be looking at, at, at uh, No Mercy coming up and Spring Explosion. We'll have a follow-up on uh, Toast Show from up there um, the, in uh, the Sauk Rapids. So we got some derby stuff to talk about next Monday. Looking do you forward think the to track it. will be unfroze by then? <laughs> the permafrost? It's it's only April. It might not be. <laughs> it might not be. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, if you get a chance to, uh, even though you might not get an answer right back, I know the, the messages have been um, appreciated. Jeremy posted about it today. Send a thought to, uh, to Jody and Jeremy, um, Spinning Wheels family as a whole. Uh, Sanfilippo.org. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, right here. We'll put it up there one more time. Again, if... Uh, there we go. TeamSanFilippo.org. Uh, if you're going to gonna make a donation or anything to uh, to support the cause, that's the place you should do it. Make sure you keep that in mind. Um, that's going to do it for us here tonight. We appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, all the comments and thoughts that have been shared in our chat tonight and on Facebook all over the place. We look forward to it again soon, uh, to, uh, to doing it again soon next Monday. We'll see you then. Crash Course Live is presented by Smash It Demolition Derby, who hosts Bash for Cash, Blizzard Bash, and Capital City Carnage. Online at SmashItDerby.com. And Stirring Dirt Racing, host of May Mania's team show at the Golden Spike Arena in Ogden, Utah. Online at StirringDirtRacing.com. Reckless Abandoned Derby Apparel and Derby Inc. Magazine. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FigureLakes1.com studios in downtown Sackville Falls, New York.